Isaacs with you and today we're going to return to the Essential Strum Song series with a look at Neil Young's My My Hey Hey or Hey Hey My My. You might be aware of a couple of different versions of it, the acoustic and electric. I'm sort of mixing a combination of the two as I generally do with the Essential Songs videos. I'm less interested in doing a completely accurate transcription as I am in giving you the sort of heart, the basic material of the song and then you can make choices from there. So here's what we're looking at. Now, if you're familiar with the acoustic version, you might know that Neil Young is tuned down a whole step. I am staying in standard tuning, so if you go to play along with him, then you will need to drop all six of your strings down a step so that your A minor chord actually sounds as a G minor. So what I'm mostly interested in is the combination of picked bass notes and strummed chords like this. One, two, three, four. Let's walk through the licks first. Open A, walking up the A string, O, two, three, and then open D. Back to the A string, two, O, and then third fret of the sixth string, and back to open A. Timing like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one. So notice we start on the beat. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one. I'm mentioning the beat because this is relevant to where the chords go. There are times when the melody does hit the downbeat one, there are times when it doesn't, and that affects where you strum the chord. But let's keep going, we'll talk about that more in a second. So here's what we had so far. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Wait another measure. Small variation. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. That second lick started the same as the first lick. O, oh, O, oh, two, three, O. Oh. But then on the D string, I'm hammering this because I think it sounds good, and some of the time he does it, and some of the time he doesn't. Again, I'm not trying to be note perfect. I want to put the song across, and this works nicely here. So, note, hammer on on the D string to the second fret, then open D, ring finger to the C on the fourth string, fifth string rather, back to open D, and back to open A. So it's O, O, oh, two, three, O, oh. hammer, two, O, oh, three, O, oh, O, oh. followed by the F major chord. Now the next part doesn't happen right away in the acoustic version. You hear that riff a couple of times, a verse, that riff again, a verse, and then it moves into the next part. I think the electric version is put together a little differently. So let's continue on with the next piece of the riff off a C chord. C bass, now walking up a C major pentatonic scale. C, open D, second fret E, and then an open G. I'm just going with an E minor chord. So, one, two, three, oh, two, oh, and two, one, and two, and one. That's coming down from this second fret A on the third string. Two, O, next string, two, O, and then open A, which is going now against an A minor chord, and then we just continue on 
to F major 7. And then we return to the first lick. Ba -da -do -da. I'll play all that now with the chords added in. I want you to also notice the difference in the pick stroke on single notes and the pick stroke on the strummed chord. One, two, three, four. So the chords are A minor, G, F major 7. You're probably familiar with this fingering. You might have learned this as a simple cheater F. Ring finger on the 4th string 3rd fret, middle finger on the 3rd string 2nd fret, index finger on the 2nd string 1st fret, and then including the open E string makes it F major 7. We're also going to make use of the open A string as part of this chord some of the time. So, A minor, note the rhythm. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and syncopate. Two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Here's that syncopated rhythm again. Three, and up, up, down, down, up, down. C. That syncopated rhythm on the F, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, together. Okay, let's put the pieces together. Notice the difference in the right hand attack on a single note, which is primarily just dipping thumb towards the floor. There's a small rotation of the forearm. You could think of it as a turn of the wrist as well, but the movement is essentially pad of the thumb goes down and the pick rotates out just a little. And all of the energy of that movement is going through the string. By contrast, the strum leads with the fingertips, the whole forearm rotates and the whole arm swings down and somewhat away so that we can play downstroke or swing back for an upstroke. So it's important to be clear on the difference between these two approaches. find it challenging to hit the right strings when you play these single note parts, there's a few things you can do. Most of it does involve anchoring the right hand. I don't particularly like using that term, but it's the word you hear people using. I don't like anchor because anchor implies something that doesn't move. The only downside, really, to resting your hand anywhere on the face of the guitar is that it might lock you in in that region and then when you want to reach somewhere else you've got to twist in ways that are unnatural, uncomfortable, and not very musical or comfortable. I want to know that if I'm resting down here, which I will do sometimes, that I can let go to come back to the bass strings. I tend to rest more on this side if I'm going to rest to play on the bass strings, either with the bass of the thumb sitting on top of the bridge, or even you could think of it as the fleshy part here resting on sometimes the face of the guitar, sometimes the bridge, sometimes the strings. Of course you have to be careful if I want to play the A string, I can't really sit on the E string without muting the A, and I'm not looking to play a muted note. I'm just looking to stabilize the picking hand a little bit so I can be a little more accurate. Now you could make the argument that it's better to float, but there are lots of great players that don't. I think the main thing is to recognize that picking is going to be about calibrating your sense of distance from string to string. And so you can practice things like find the C chord, just pick the fifth string, and then move to the fourth and say, how far is it? 
when I go from one string to the next. And so do I have to look to find that, or can I feel my way? It's worth practicing that. Or doing something similar with bass drum, bass drum. If I touch the base of my thumb to either the string or the face over here, it is easier for me to find that A string, but it does force me to turn in a little bit, so I have to be aware of the attack. If I float, I can find it. I'm relying on resting the palm a little bit as a crutch, maybe. But truthfully, if something makes you a little more confident, I don't see that it's a bad thing. I'll play through the whole part now, including both the bass melody and the strong chords, and notice the way that each one sits in the beat. The basic melody is ba, 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 ba. So it starts on the downbeat, one, two, but everything after that is three and four and, three and four and. And we don't actually strum the chord on those downbeats that were left out. We're going to strum on the eighth note after that. Watch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one. That should give you the foundation to the song. There's a link below to a basic tab that should give you everything you need to put the pieces together. If you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe, comment below, I always like to hear from you. If you don't follow me elsewhere on my own newsletter, please check out NashvilleGuitarGuru.com. I send out content every month, including lesson videos, blogs, and there's always an in case you missed it section for any new content that's been put up on YouTube. Facebook, or one of the blogs in the interval between newsletters. So thanks again for watching. I'm Dave Isaacs, and I'll see you next time.